Brett Swartz here, Capital Gains Tax Solutions. In this video, we are covering when a 1031 exchange de destroys a deferred sales trust. Um, now, you know, we're here, we love deferred sales trust uh, at Capital Gains Tax Solutions, but we also love the 1031 exchange when you can find a deal. So what are the main ways to know when to use a 1031 exchange? Well, there's a couple, right? There's when you have a value-add property, right? When it fits your, your lifestyle or your stage of building wealth, um, and or when uh, you're you're looking at a deal, maybe that's that's not quite as big of a gain. And so let's start with the first one, which is value add property. This is the most important thing. In fact, we just closed a deal for our client. Uh, we're also a, a multifamily brokerage team here in Sacramento. And so the client was selling a 12 unit apartment complex in Auburn, California. For those that know who Auburn, it's just outside of Sacramento, about 35 minutes. It's a nice uh, nice nice town. And uh, this particular property sold for about 1.75 million dollars and he was looking at a deferred sales trust as his first option until he found a deal in San Francisco that was a value add off market opportunity just a couple blocks from his office so not only was it value add and that he could go in immediately and increase the value by what's called forced appreciation right improving the property doing full renovation and increasing the rents. Uh, but number two, he could also uh, rent out the top unit as well, and it was closer to his office. So it's a lifestyle thing as well, where it, it's it's close to his office, it's it's close, uh, it's a good value add opportunity. And then he can also uh, create a, a cool environment with a retail on the bottom. So it's basically a retail with apartments on top, retail on the bottom space. That he's, he's already done this, by the way. And he, he's in San Francisco. He lives and breathes and owns real estate for many, many years. He's an architect. Like all of the things line up. He's got all of the scale, all of the relationships. It's it's right there. And so these are when 1031 exchanges can be home runs, when you can be so hands-on that it's very, you lower the risk of failing, right? You lower the risk of failing. And when you know the market so well that you're getting a great opportunity, no matter what market, in. And we're recording this video right now, and it's uh, you know late September 2022, and we're looking at you know rising interest rates and really a changing environment. But it speaks to the ability to do a 1031 exchange to defer capital gains tax, roll it into another deal, as long as the deal makes sense. And you can always find a deal that makes sense if you are in tune with the market, right? If you have the relationships locally. And you also have the passion and the drive to 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 build on something or or improve something. Okay, so that's really the number one thing is is the value add component. Um, the next thing could be uh, when when the deal is just not big enough, right? So if you have a deal. Uh, that you can 1031 exchange from instead of a deferred sales trust, meaning that the gain isn't big enough. We found that unless you have a million dollar net proceeds, million dollar gain, the deferred sales trust doesn't make sense. And so you want to use the 1031 exchange because you have an opportunity to not only still defer the tax, and it's very you know inexpensive. It's around $1,000 or so to do an exchange versus the ongoing fees with the deferred sales trust and the new trustee, which is our role. So you if you can, you can decrease those complications, right? You can lower the cost and you can find a deal, then that is great. Now remember, 1031 exchanges only work for investment real estate. It doesn't work for primary homes or businesses or cryptocurrency, whereas the deferred sales trust works for any asset type, including those three, also investment real estate. And the deferred sales trust can be a backup plan for your 1031 exchange as well. Now, how about this question? Well, when would I not use either or, right? When would I not use either or? Well, there's a there's kind of a cool third option here that uh, is called bonus depreciation, especially in 2022, where it's 100% bonus depreciation that uh, you can sell, you can take constructive receipt, but as long as you reinvest in the same year into a project where you can you can accelerate the depreciation, you have a chance to offset the tax. And I'll give you an example. We had a we had a call this week, and the gentleman was selling. It's about a five hundred fifty thousand dollar property. His liability is about one hundred fifty thousand. And it's just kind of too small for the deferred sales trust. And so what we said to him, it's also too small for a 1031 exchange into a, a passive uh, syndication deal. Sometimes you can do carve outs where you do like a tenant in common, and, but those are typically also reserved for larger larger, larger net equity uh, deals, maybe a million and a half, $2 million. So for his scenario, it didn't work for a 1031 exchange for his own, nor did it work for 1031 carve out, nor did it work for a deferred sales trust. So what I recommend he, he, he would do is consider, talk with the CPA, 
uh, take constructive receipt of the funds at close of escrow. So he's going to be owing the tax, but he immediately invests those, uh, all of the funds or a portion of the funds back into a passive multifamily syndication deal in Texas, where they're going to uh, exercise bonus depreciation, where he's probably going to be able to offset 40 to 50 cents of every dollar that he invests is going to come back and it could offset that about $150,000 in capital gains tax liability. So this is called cost segregation, bonus depreciation, but it's not using a 1031 exchange, it's not using a deferred sales trust. And so um, that's the time when you maybe don't use one or the other. I guess another time would also be if you have some loss, right? We've had deals where someone might have a, a $3 million gain, but come to find out they had uh, you know about a million and a half dollar loss that was in a previous year. And we said, hey, go check with your CPA and see if we can offset some or all of your gain coming up on this year. And that can also um, decrease uh, the, the tax liability, which means you don't need the deferred sales trust. In fact, we just had a client, a potential client, um, he at Atherton selling a house for about $8 million. And he had about a $5 million gain, but he found out he had like another additional $2.5 million loss. And he's able to talk with the CPA and he's able to offset the gain in the same year and essentially decrease decrease that loss not need, not needing the deferred sales trust and so we worked with them and worked work through all that but th those are those are the things you want to look at you want to look at all of your options think of it like in a rubik's cube in your situation you have all of these challenges and how do you line it up as best you can by working with your cpa working with our team to figure out what's the best exit plan for you and sometimes that involves a deferred sales trust sometimes that involves a 1031 exchange sometimes it doesn't involve either of those and you might use uh bonus depreciation cost seg the key is hiring the who, you know, getting your dream team involved to help you execute on your exit plan. Because guess what? These million dollar exits or hundred thousand dollar exits, you only have one shot here, right? Typically to do something with the tax and you want to, you want to make sure you have a tax flow plan and you're not stuck just paying capital gains tax. Otherwise you could have deferred or could have got rid of using some other strategy. Hey, if we can help you with clarifying any of this, because this is a lot to take in, in one video, go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com, apply for a no-cost consultation, download our free ebook, check out our free mastermind on Fridays where we uh, we take live live deals and we break them down. Then also check out the new book that's coming out, Building a Tax Deferred Exit Strategy, uh, where we uh, we have some amazing people like Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank and other financial advisors and multifamily syndicators. So we so appreciate you watching this video. Please rate, review, subscribe. Please share this with someone who could, you could who could be inspired and or helped with their exit planning.